Hi everyone and welcome to a video tutorial for this cat toy that strangely enough Melba will not play with on demand. So we hope you enjoy it. Please like, share and subscribe and we hope to see you soon. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Okay, so to make this ball cat toy, you'll need some yarn, of course. Now, I've got this recycled cotton that is uh, one that's been tested for any harmful substances. So I feel confident using it for Melba. Uh, this would be about a four weight, and you can see, perhaps see the texture of it there. Um, you want a yarn that doesn't split easily for this project and like I said I'm always going to recommend that you use something non-toxic for your cat so that's what I'm going for today now you can alter the size of this ball by adding um, so, sorry by increasing your yarn weight and or your hook size okay so you want a relatively large hook for your yarn um, you want to go probably above what your yarn recommends and so I'm using a six millimeter as my main hook and you'll need a second hook that's of a similar size so I've got a five millimeter for my secondary hook which I'll be using at the end so you just need one main hook and then you'll need a hook that you'll use towards the end you'll need a darning needle to do some hand sewing and weave in your ends at the end you'll need a stitch marker you'll need a pair of scissors and you'll need to decide what you're going to stuff your ball with and you don't have to stuff it with anything you can either but you could stuff it with some cotton wool to make a more solid ball shape you can insert a little bell inside it and or you could stuff it as well and um, thanks to the luminous pets I've got this catnip although I'm not going to add it because Melba is just you know it's not even worth try and catnip with her she's, she's just not interested in it at all but you could stuff it with some catnip as well or you could spray your your stuffing with a little bit of cat um, like a valerian spray or a catnip spray you could also spray your stuffing before you put it into your ball so uh, yeah let's move on to the techniques that you'll need Okay, so here's uh, the three balls that I've made. Now, they're all, these two are made with the same yarn, and this is the one I'm filming today. This one is the same yarn, but um, I've used a smaller hook size for this one, so it's slightly smaller, um, and I've stuffed this one, so this is a more solid ball. And this one today, I've, I haven't stuffed it, but I've just put a ball inside it, so it's not as, as, uh, as sort of solid, and it, I've used a larger hook size, so it's slightly larger. And this one here I've made using a chunky yarn. It's a wool, I think it's a wool acrylic blend. And I've just, I've put a, a, a bell inside this one as well. And I've used a larger hook size so I get this larger sized ball. Um, this one would be about three centimeters across. This one perhaps about four centimeters. And this one probably about seven, let's say seven or eight centimeters across. So um, you can alter the size by altering your yarn size and your hook size. Um, the stitches that you'll need to know and techniques that you'll need to know are how to make a slip knot onto your hook, how to create a chain, how to do a puff stitch um, in a, in a, using three um, yarn, times yarning over. Um, and I'll show you that as we move through. And then we'll just be doing some simple hand sewing uh, towards the end just to tidy up our ball and weave in our ends. And you know this it's it's a it's a quite well known technique. It's called the jasmine stitch and it's made into this ball, okay? So it's quite you know quite a well known technique. And um, yeah, it's probably for sort of more intermediate to advanced beginners there it's a little bit fiddly <laughs> but um, you know if you persevere a, a beginner could could um, could do this could do this pattern it just might take a little bit of perseverance at the beginning to you know get your your head and your hands around the techniques so um, yeah let's get started okay so take your yarn and your main hook and make a slip knot onto your hook now there's a few different ways to make a slip knot, so you make it your way. And then we're going to chain 
four. So just make all of your stitches in this project pretty loose. So nice loose chains, three and oops, and four. And then to make a loop, we're going to slip stitch into that first chain. Okay, so slip stitch into that first chain. So you've got a little loop here. Now just make sure that you've located the center point of your of your little loop. So it can be, sometimes it looks like where you've slip stitched is where you need to work into, but actually it's just underneath there. So you've got this center point here. Okay, so make sure you're working into the correct spot. Now we're going to work this in um, more or less three rounds. So we're going to move on to round one now. So you'll chain one. Now we're going to work into the center of this loop and before we start we're going to pull out our loop a bit. Okay, so you want this to be nice and loose, this loop. And we're going to do a, a three puff stitch. So a puff stitch with three um, yarns over. So yarn over, insert your hook, pull up a loop, that's one. Yarn over, insert your hook, pull up a loop, that's two. Yarn over, insert your hook, pull up a loop, that's three. And then what we're going to do is we're going to pull our yarn through all of these loops. So just, you, you can double check that you've got seven loops on your hook. And we're going to yarn over here in readiness to pull our yarn through all of those loops. But first we're going to add a stitch marker. Okay, so we want to isolate this strand here underneath the hook. Okay, so this strand... Let me point with my. We want to isolate this strand here, underneath here. Okay, so place your stitch marker underneath that strand, and then we're going to pull through all of these loops. So just pull through. Keep everything nice and loose. Pull that out a little bit, and then we're going to work underneath that strand that we've stitch marks now put the stitch marker in now if you don't put the stitch marker in you'll lose that strand okay so that's why we need to stitch mark it now underneath that strand place your hook pull up a loop yarn over oops yarn over pull through those two loops and then chain one okay so you want to be working nice and loose and I have a tendency to work on the tighter side so I need to keep reminding myself too Okay, so that's your first stitch in this first round. Now you can take out that stitch marker ready for the next stitch. And then we're going to move on to the next stitch in this round. So it's going to be two of these puff stitches together. Okay, so pull out your yarn. Yarn over. Now we're working underneath. So just on top of this, once again I'll get my other hook. We're going to be working into this space here. Okay, just on top of that that first puff stitch. So yarn over, insert your hook, pull up a loop, yarn over, insert your hook, pull up a loop, yarn over, insert your hook, pull up a loop. Okay, so that's your first puff stitch. Now we're going to move on, before we pull through the loops, we're going to work our second puff stitch back into this beginning loop. Okay, so keep everything nice and loose in there, yarn over, Insert your hook, pull up a loop, yarn over, insert your hook, pull up a loop, yarn over, insert your hook, pull up a loop. Okay, so that's your second puff stitch. Now, I'll just get my tail out the way there. Now we want to yarn over and again isolate this strand underneath here. So put your stitch marker in. And then we're going to pull through all of these loops. So there should be 14 loops on your hook. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Actually, just 13. Beg your pardon, because that counts the first loop that was on our hook. So 13 loops. Now you're going to pull through that f the first section of loops. So keep it nice and loose with working with your hook. And you can stop halfway and just loosen that up a little bit. And then you can... Pull through the second 
part of the loops. Now pull out a little bit there and then you're going to work back underneath where the stitch marker is holding that strand for you. Pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through those two loops and then chain one. Okay, so working nice and loosely. So you've got these big holes in your work for now, most likely, and that's fine. Don't worry, they will close up, and also at the end we'll do some hand sewing that can help to close that, those up even further. Okay, so that's the second stitch in our round one. In this next stitch, we're going to do exactly the same thing, so the two puff stitches together. So pull out your yarn. Actually, let's take that stitch marker out first. So pull out your yarn. And again, once again, we're working above this puff, these puff stitches here. Yarn over, insert your hook, pull up a loop. Yarn over, insert your hook, pull up a loop. Yarn over, insert your hook, pull up a loop. Okay, so that's your first puff stitch. Then we're working back into that beginning space. So just repeating what we've just done. One. Two. And... Three, everything nice and loose. Yarn over, insert your stitch marker, and then nice and loosely pull through those first that first puff stitch, and then loosen out that that loop a little bit if you need to, and then pull through the second lot. Okay, loosen that up a little bit, and then work underneath that strand that you've placed the stitch mark under, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and then chain one. Okay, so that's our third stitch in this round. We've got two to go, so we're going to repeat that same thing one more time. So pull out that loop, so exactly the same two puff stitches working into the top of your previous puff stitches and then into this beginning loop here so keeping that beginning loop there one two and three yarning over isolating that strand and then pulling through so keeping everything nice and loose now a little trick i find to just gently pull against these loops to help maneuver your yarn through okay and then of course we're doing the same thing going underneath that strand pull this out a little bit if you need to go underneath this strand here pull up a loop pull through two loops, chain one. Okay, And then in the last stitch of this first round, we're going to place three puff stitches together. Okay, So pull out your yarn again. So everything needs to be nice and loose. Yarn over, set your hook, pull up a loop. Two and three. So actively making that nice and loose into that center space once again for your second one one two and three so nice and loose and then moving on and working into this next see the top of these next this next one here so it'll naturally present itself to you this space here yarn over so your hook pull up a loop nice and loose Yarn over, insert your hook, pull up a loop. Yarn over, insert your hook, pull up a loop. Okay, yarn over. So I should have mentioned at the beginning, but just don't use one of those crochet hooks that have, um, you know, like a rubber piece on the end. You need, you need a clear crochet hook, obviously. And yarn over. Insert your stitch marker 
and then nice and loose pull through that first set of loops nice and loose pull through the second and just go you know just move nice and slowly and then through loosen it up a little bit if you need to and then through the third so this can get a little bit tricky get it all the way through there loosen that up insert your hook underneath that stitch marker pull up a loop yarn over pull through and make a chain stitch so forgive my phone there okay so then we'll be moving on to round two okay this finishes off round one okay so you can see now at the end of round one we've kind of got a start of a ball shape okay and you can see that we've got one two three four five puff stitches in this bottom area so you know that's that's our starting area there and then we're going to continue on creating this ball shape moving on to round two so nothing really gets more complicated from here we just add these puff stitches together and we ultimately end up with five puff stitches together okay but to start off this next round we're just putting two together again okay so pull out your loop yarn over insert your hook pull out two and three moving on to that next space here yarn over insert your hook pull up a loop yarn over insert your hook pull up a loop yarn over insert your hook pull up a loop okay so you, once again we're just doing the same thing with the two puff stitches together yarn over insert your stitch marker and do the same thing again loosen that up a little bit insert your hook underneath that strand pull up a loop pull through two and chain one okay so that's our first stitch in the second round in the next three stitches in this round will be sets of three puff stitches okay so like we finished the last round we'll be doing three together so I'm going to go and do head and do one more with you and then I'm going to let you finish off those last two on your own okay so pull out your yarn yarn over insert your hook into the top of these two puff stitches that you've just done one two and three everything nice and loose moving on to that next space one two and three everything nice and loose and then once again into that next space oops three puff stitch two and three so it can get a little bit tricky if you're not loose obviously it gets a little bit tricky yarn over isolate that strand underneath pull through that first set nice and loose pull through that second set and then through this final set loosen that up slip your hook underneath that isolated strand pull up a loop yarn over pull through two chain one okay so go ahead and do two more of those sets of three puff stitches together okay I'm going to pause here and I'm going to finish that off off camera so you'll work here here and here for your next one and then you'll do you you repeat the same pattern for one more set of three okay so I'll meet you once I've done that okay so I've finished my um two sets of three there now to finish out this round the second round we're going to do a set of four together okay and you may need your second hook for this one okay so start everything in the same way so just pull out a loop 
yarn over, pull up a loop, two, and tail out the way, and three. Move on to the next space. One, two, and three. Now, what you can do here is you can change your hook. Or if you're happy to keep going with this hook, just keep going to the third puff stitch. Now, I'm going to change my hook here for this last one. So I've got my second hook. You're just going to yarn over and to finish off your fourth puff stitch in that next stitch using your second hook. Okay, so just the same thing. Yarn over, mark your strand. With that first hook, just pull through your first puff stitch. Pull out that hook, insert your first hook, and keep going through those strands. So, so that's through the second or the third one, second one, and first one. Okay, and then sorry before you do that working underneath that strand just as before pull up a loop yarn over pull through two loops and then chain one okay and that finishes off row two now we've got one more row left and you can see that you've got quite a nice ball shape by now and before you move on to this row, what you can do is you can stuff your stuff your ball. Now, I'm not decided yet. I think I might just put a um, bell in this one. I was going to just stuff it, but I think I'm going to do that. Yeah, I'm just going to put the ball in this one. So now is the time to stuff or put your catnip or whatever you're doing. And... Then we're going to move on to the last round. Okay, so the last round is just one stitch. Okay, so it's a it's a set of five puff stitches together. Now for this one you will need your second hook. Okay, so pull out your yarn, start your first puff stitch in that space underneath your last ones. Move on to the next space, one, two, and three. Now one more, make everything nice and loose. Now you might just have to bend around a little bit. One, keep everything nice and loose, two, and three. Now, you will need to use your second hook on this one. So, yarn over, work into your next space with your next puff stitch. And that makes four. And now, in this final space, complete your fifth puff stitch. And you can just work that tail inside there. That's what I think I'll do. Get that tail in there. And then work your last puff stitch in that last space two and three now you don't need to mark your your strand on this last one you'll just yarn over and pull through pull through the next set and remove your hook insert your sick your first hook and then continue pulling through those last three sets one two and three now what you'll do here is you can just yarn over and make a make a chain stitch and then one more chain stitches stitch yarn over pull out a strand now leave a, a reasonable amount so you can do a little bit of hand sewing but you can snip off that end and you'll just have to shape your ball a little bit here okay so just shape your ball 
And then you will take your darning needle. Now, it's up to you, you know, how much you, you, you sew here. But you'll take your, your strand. And actually, I think I'm going to have to change my needle. I have chosen one without a big enough eye, so I'll be right back. Okay, I've got a larger, larger needle there. Okay, so now what you're going to do is you're just going to sew. Now, it'll depend. You might not mind about having the little holes in here, but you need to sew your, your tail end anyway. So what I do is I just work around the edges of those, those areas where you worked your puff stitch into, and I just... through and I just sort of draw those little holes together I've gone through too many I think let me just go back go under less there we go there we go so just follow around those strands and just sort of draw together those those holes and you can move around and do it for any hole that you feel like needs to be sort of closed up a little bit and I've split the yarn again going through there let's just pull that back there we go so you can just sort of neaten up your your ball and sew those holes together by just drawing them together like this so you can see this one is quite a big hole so I'm going to move up there and do some sewing around there so I'll finish mine off off camera and you just go ahead and you neaten up your ball however you want to neaten it up a little bit of hand sewing and I'll meet you once I've finished off mine and uh, yeah I'll be back soon oh and if you want to so for example I want to move from this hole on this side through to this hole on this side you just poke your needle up through the center and you might have to sort of avoid if you've stuffed yours you might have to avoid the stuffing but you'll just pull it up towards wherever you want to do a little bit of sewing okay so I'll see you in a moment Okay, and then when you've got your ball looking how you want it, and again, you can just, you know, you can just even up. If some of the strands are a little bit looser than the others, you can just push them into the ball. And then once you've got it how you want it, just put your hook, your needle, sorry, through the, and this keeps splitting. I have to find where it's not splitting. Just put it through your ball however you can, you know, through the stuffing or up just along the side. And I've got just a, a bell in the middle, so I can just get that through pretty easily, except where it splits. And just pull your... Oh, yeah, it's split again. Anyway, you get the point. You just pull your... Let's just weave it a little bit closer. So this yarn is sort of splitting and catching my catching my needle. Let's see if I can get in there somewhere. There we go. Okay. And then what you can do is you can just snip off that excess or you can push it down into the down into the ball. Using your needle or your crochet hook. Push it down into the ball. And there is your cat toy. So I've got my three. I've got two with little bells and one that's stuffed. So this is, you know, it's just a fun, fun tutorial for your cat. And, you know, I hope you've enjoyed it. So I would love to see um, photos, videos of your cat playing with his or her 
uh, ball, so uh, cat toys. So please send those along to catventurous.community at gmail.com or you can tag us on social media at catventurous.crochet. So uh, thanks very much for being here and I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Add any comments in the comments box below and you know give our videos a like and a share if you uh, think other people would like them too. So once again thanks very much for being here and we hope to see you soon. Thanks. Bye. play? Go on. <laughs> it's not going to happen. She looks grumpy. Yeah, sounds grumpy too. You okay, Minva? You'll be fine. <laughs>